What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel After Sound here bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here in this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning so come by and say hello. Alright guys, I should have said Soul Keep content because this is technically a little bit of an update on Soul Keep. Uh, we obviously got the announcement last week about the fact that the game has been sold officially to Double Coconut and a couple of days ago, so today I'm recording this on the 22nd, this is posted on the Double Coconut blog on the 19th so just three days ago and a couple days after the official announcement um now here's the thing they're saying soul keep reincarnated we have i haven't heard anything from them so this is like the only official like update from the double coconut side of things but uh there's there's just a couple of interesting things that i thought would be worth sharing here uh for anybody who's still wonder, uh, wondering what's going on or interested in the project so uh you know they're saying that splinterlands dropped the announcement last week that we've acquired soul keep uh the top question we've seen is a very good one why the heck was the launch so delayed after all we announced the game was closed beta and uh uh, several early adopters even got the chance to play it, me being one of them. So what happened? While we don't want to rehash history too much or violate any NDAs, this video may offer some answers. And so let me just play this real quick. And uh, it's a kid who shoots himself in... Yep. <laughs> it just... I'm sorry. It just gets funnier every single time. But uh, <laughs> in all seriousness, the main issue was deprioritization by Splinterlands, given all else going on, making it impossible to do the last mile of integration between Tower Defense and the Splinterlands platform. With the new deal, Double Coconut commits to support the game fully and independently. Splinterlands, in turn, is committing to uh, handling the integration of the title with the player account uh, and the seamless use of DEC credits and SPS and continued use of the infrastructure for, bu for buying exchanging and renting nfts so this is all good stuff there's still going to be a marketplace for uh everything that we want to do uh, maybe we knew that already maybe we didn't it's good to hear from the double coconut side uh one thing that i read in an article that was posted on i think it was like game so it's like g a m 3 s is the way that it's spelled uh, th that kind of like it's like a web 3 games uh, publication that i don't see here um, and again, I don't know where they got their information. I'm just reporting what the news is reporting, right? They said simply that, uh, or they, they said a factor of this was Splinterlands going through re reorganization. So we know that that reorganization was announced in September, but obviously, you know, it, I'm sure it didn't just happen in a vacuum. I'm sure it didn't just happen uh, overnight. And when you think back through the fact that, you know, this game was supposed to launch by the end of May, right? The last time we saw David from Double Coconut on the town hall uh, was I think in April of 2023 saying that they were shooting for a late May. They were shooting for a late May launch of the game. Uh, and then obviously we even got into July where we were told it was like really close, really close. So um, again, you know, there's, there's probably just a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes. It gives a little bit more context, even though obviously they can't go into the any, any of the NDAs and obviously we, we don't know the full story, but um, you know, during the pause, this is a good part here. During the pause, Double Coconut has studied a lot about what does and doesn't work across crypto gaming, and we believe the updated launch will be more elegant, more rewarding, and truly more fun. Uh, some big features we're finalizing, so they're retuning the single-player gameplay to be a bit more friendly and less punishing. Uh, for anybody who remember playing, I, I didn't think it was that hard, but there were some people who like also beat the game super easily, so I don't know what it is. Clear and reasonable SPS rewards based on daily, asynchronous, and multiplayer tournaments. So that is actually really cool, because I, I, I don't know what we were expecting when it first came through, but obviously the extra time that the team has had, they have put in multiplayer tournaments, um, and you know, there's, I, I, I don't know, this is going to be exciting to see how they end up doing the SPS rewards. Now keep in mind, we did vote on something uh, in terms of like the staking requirements for these rewards. I wonder how out of date that might be. I mean, as it stands, it should be that that should be the law, right? Until it's changed, right? That that's what we voted for. But I don't know if we're gonna see something come up in the future, maybe with like a different kind of play to earn model. Because when I see this, I'm just like, hmm, maybe it's not every game you play. Maybe it's every you know every day based on the number of games and the number of other you know a, a bunch of other factors. But either way. The multiplayer tournaments is what I wanted to focus on there. I think that's really cool because, you know, tower defense can be something that is just single player. <laughs> I, every tower de defense game I've played, I get super into it just myself. But the fact that we'll be able to do this with other people, uh, make it more competitive, I think is really exciting. 
Um, huge value for existing pack holders with ability for new players to engage uh, with the game at any level they wish by buying assets on the secondary market. So I, I'm curious about this. Obviously, they still owe, I think, like a hero or something like that for people who bought 500 packs during the presale. But now I'm wondering if there's going to be a benefit for holding packs right now. Now, this is not financial advice. I'm not saying to go buy out and buy packs. I'm not buying any more packs. I just thought that this was interesting, right? And we'll have to wait until there's a little bit more clarity on that. And then segmenting NFT slash rewarded play from standard play, allowing the game to be launched eventually on iOS and Android to onboard non-crypto mass market players in a meaningful way. This is awesome because we've always, you know, we've always said for Splinterlands, it'd be great if there was like a Web 2 version of this game. And, you know, if you follow the channel, I'm really big on, on Parallel and how the, you know, the fact that Parallel is like free to play. I think it's awesome if they'll be able to not just do a free-to-play, but also an, uh, a mobile version of the game, get people excited, and then have a way for them to say, like, hey, if you really like the game, come check out the NFT, you know, play-to-earn side of it. So you kind of get people to get their foot in the door that way, where they can easily start up without having to spend any money. And if they realize that they like it and that they want to continue on, this is, you know, that that to me is awesome. And and I, I'm going to say something here that, Probably, you know, a lot of people may not agree with just because we saw the we saw the response after the announcement that people were like, oh, well, you know, it's screwed now. <laughs> like it's in double coconut's hands. What are they going to do? Like, you know, there's no guarantees now, blah, blah, blah. Well, here's something that the, you know, Splinterlands team would not have been able to do and may not from a from a let's let's call it like. A philosophical or principle standpoint, they they don't want to do that with their current game, right? The the trading card game. They don't want to make a free to play version because they say that devalues assets. Even though many people, including myself in the community, think that that would provide a ton of value in terms of getting people in the door. Well, now that this is going to Double Coconut, Double Coconut owns it, and they say we want to make a free to play version because we think that's going to be helpful for, to onboard the masses, as they say, the non crypto masses. So I, I think that's a huge win. Uh, for Soul Keep, and obviously it's going to end up being a huge one for the Splinterlands ecosystem if everything continues to use the SPS, DEC, and uh, credit system. Uh, and then finally here, so when will this finally be over for business? We haven't announced a date yet, but we are pushing for this to be on the order of two to three months at most. Uh, soon we will invite those who hold a large number of packs to try things out and give initial feedback. So maybe you should be buying packs right now if you want to be part of that you know initial thing. We have a lot more announcements coming, and we plan our uh, we plan on our own channels for community involvement, customer support, yada yada yada. Uh, and then we're also going to bring back the weekly development blog. So that is really exciting. I am very pumped for Soul Keep. Uh, again, I've, I'm just I'm a fan of the tower defense genre. This is a great update from them. Again, I'm sure there's a lot of people who are jaded and feel burned out there that are going to look at this and say, "Yeah, show me something." And you're right; we, they got to show us something. But this is better than the silence we've heard for the last eight months since July of last year. So I'm just looking forward to the fact that now Double Coconut owns it. They have a very vested interest in making it an amazing game. And um, yeah, I, I'm just looking forward to it. Let me see if I can actually pull up that blog. I'm curious. Oh yeah, so here it is, games.gg. Just so, just so I'm citing my sources here because there's something else that I think would be worth sharing. Uh, let's see, where was it? Uh, this, the, oh, let's see. In recent developments, they've confirmed by Soulkeep. Despite the change in ownership, Soulkeep. Oh no, that's not what I wanted to show. Um. So, see here, slated for release in 2023, face delays due to Splinterlands reorganization, leading to the change in ownership. However, both teams are working collaboratively. And then, let's see, there's actually, this is from David, right? So, just to show his own words uh, outside of the blog. Uh, we're so happy to be finally launching this innovative tower defense title. Double Coconut is dedicated to growing Soul Keep into a preeminent and iconic Web3 title. And for people who are not familiar with, with Double Coconut, we've talked about it before, but they have made other games, right? They they made Heads Up, Deal or No Deal. If you played any of those from the Web2 standpoint, those were huge games, right? I mean, I, I never played the Deal or No Deal. I was just never interested, but I've definitely played Heads Up. And so I, I'm just excited to see what they can do in the mobile space specifically, mobile Web2 to Web3 bridge space is where I'm, I'm really excited about. So that's all I have for you guys in this video. Just thought I'd share a little bit of an update of what I've been going through, but let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Otherwise, I will catch you all in the next video and see you around the game. Take care.